Well, it works. Today's video is part two in a series where we design, build, and iterate on an instrument that incorporates modern design features of the piano into a beautiful and expressive historical instrument. Hi y'all, I'm Lexa. It's great to see you. Let's make something awesome. Hi YouTube, I'm Lexa Baldwin. I'm a creator, maker, and serial dreamer. I create videos on all things making and how to use 3D printing to make the future happen. If that's your jam, then subscribe for more videos every week. In last week's video, we laid out a design for a modification of a clavichord, which is a keyed instrument kind of like a piano, but much older, that suffered from some serious drawbacks, foremost of which being it had less volume and you had to hold down the notes to play a sound. You can get effects such as tremolo, which is how guitarists can bend the strings or use a whammy bar to get that nice wah-wah sound. Effects like that that a piano just can't replicate. Now the biggest disadvantage came from that advantage of the keys being directly connected to the strings. Because you were directly connected, as soon as you let go of a key, the notes stopped playing. We get around that by using a hammer that strikes a tangent arm as opposed to a tangent directly striking the string. We then use a system of dampers similar to a piano so that the note can still sustain even when the key is released. We drew it out on paper and then we went into SolidWorks and laid out a very rough sketch. The sketch got the point across but it was definitely basic proof of concept. We did that so I could print it and see if any ideas came to me. Well. Surprise, they did. I discovered several disadvantages with the print. Some of them were specifically related to the printing process. I didn't consider it at the time, but you run into a problem with 3D printing when if you print long straight lines, they're much more susceptible to lifting from the print bed. That happened to me. Even though I generally have dialed in my trunk seat at the point where I'm not suffering any problems with bed adhesion, the hammer still broke loose. Here is an example of one, one of the failed prints. This one, it's stuck about two thirds of the way, but then it started peeling back at the point where it was gonna reach the hammer head. This of course meant that as I printed them in separate pieces, as I discussed, those pieces just don't fit together. So the first thing I did to get around this was a little 3D printing trick where you put a bunch of holes in the part to disrupt the straight lines. That helped tremendously. But I still got problems with that print being able to line up perfectly to a point where I felt comfortable with its ability to hold that joint under playing. It worked fine for a demonstration, but I went back and iterated on that anyways. So instead of having a diagonal cut between the head and the arm of the hammer. I moved the slice from mid arm to at the top of the hammer. This allows an added benefit of also being able to fill the hammer with lead by making it hollow. I didn't do that for this demonstration, but when we actually make a production design or a playable design, that is something that I'll definitely do. You can see on the model here, I printed the hammer arm piece and the hammer head in different plastics. So you can see the line where the two are conjoined. I then continued with the design process in SolidWorks and I drafted up several more parts and printed them out. I created the tangent arm, I created the damper, and I created a damper guide. I then put this all together with parts propped from the local hardware store to demonstrate a working mechanism. You can see when the key lever is pressed, it pushes up on the hammer, but it also, by using the damper guide, pushes up on the damper, raising the damper above the string, allowing the hammer to strike the string and have the string vibrate while the key is pressed. And like a piano, when the key is released, the damper falls and silences the string. But a sustain pedal can also push up all of the dampers when pressed. This means if a note is played, the pedal is held and the key is released, the string will continue vibrating as intended. If we look at this design, you can see 
All of the parts are working as intended. When the key is pressed, the linkage raises the hammer, causing it to strike the tangent arm. The tangent arm then transfers most of that kinetic energy into the string, resulting in vibration. The string isn't dampened because the damper has been raised by the damper guide, resulting in the string vibrating. Now the sound is very weak and not particularly clean as the string is only about 10 centimeters long. There is no soundboard. And I only have plastic parts here, so I couldn't tighten it particularly taut. But it demonstrates that it's an effective mechanism and it works. The proof of concept is a success. And I can't pick it up on the microphone particularly well, but you can audibly hear the string vibrating which means on a better designed full model, as opposed to a basic proof of concept, it will actually produce a tone. Now, continuing on with our goals of this design concept, everything works exactly as intended. The normal mechanism of a clavichord works. You can get audible pitch bending by forcing the key down and the damper mechanism works just like it does in a piano in the fact that the damper is raised when the key is pressed, or if a pedal system raises the dampers, the key can be released and the note will still sound. The proof of concept was a roaring success. Do you have any recommendations for improvements that could be made to this design concept? If you do, please let me know in the comments. I'd really like to hear, hear your opinions and get your feedback on this mechanism. This is really basic at the time being, and I plan on improving it in a bunch of different ways. And your feedback would be greatly appreciated to help make this design even better. I'm including all of the CAD files for this project on my GitHub repo. So if you want to follow along and print these, feel free. I definitely like the way this project is going and it's coming along really well. I look forward to continuing it even more, and I'm going to release future videos as we continue on with this. Please like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell if you want to be notified when I release those future videos or other videos pertaining to making or 3D printing. Have a good one, everyone, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!